I am Steve Arabato. It was my pleasure uh, to talk about stroke and everything connected to it. Uh, Dr. Charles Prestigiacomo, uh, Chief of Service, Department of Neurological Surgery, University Hospital. Doctor, good to see you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here, sir. It's been a while since we've had you on public television talking about stroke. A lot has happened in the past 10 years. Talk about it. Very much so. Uh, when you had us uh, here 10 years ago, we were talking about uh, the new concepts of trying to treat stroke from going inside blood vessels and taking out the clots. In the last 10 years, we've had newer devices, more efficient devices, and effective ways of doing it, uh, such that we're now saving a lot more lives. And uh, the actual data has demonstrated that intra-arterial therapy, that is working through the arteries to take out these clots, helps save the lives and make people better. Doctor, take a step back. I don't want to assume that people actually know what a stroke is. Good what point. Is it? A stroke is a pretty broad encompassing term that uh, discusses the idea of injury to the brain secondary to either lack of blood flow or to big blood clots that develop around the brain or inside the brain. The ones that I'm talking about specifically today are when a clot enters a blood vessel and blocks flow to that part of the brain and then that part of the brain dies. So, so the brain needs constant blood flow. Yes. The clot stops the blood from flowing into the brain. Right. When that happens, what happens to the brain? Within minutes, you start losing brain cells. And it's been shown, based on some of the number calculations that we've done, uh, that you can lose 32,000 brain cells a second. That's over a million point eight cells a minute. Uh, and brain cells do not regenerate. And so we need to abort that. We need to stop that from happening. Why is it that I've heard the expression again and again, time is brain? What does um, that mean? That's a great question. Time is brain is exactly that point that you have uh, precious minutes to preserve these brain cells uh, by providing them the blood flow and the necessary oxygen that they need to survive. And the blood clot that we just talked about prevents that from happening. And so every second, literally, that we uh, save from that lack of uh, blood flow, we save 32,000 cells that never regenerate. And so, so that's where it goes. Sorry for interrupting. People watching us public on public television, Fios listening on radio right now, you want to give them advice. What are the signs? Actually, there's a very close friend of the public television family. Um, he knows who he is, and he knows who his family member is. <clears throat> Searing pain in her eye, said she couldn't see. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was a stroke immediately into the hospital. It was that time within 10 minutes that a particular pill was given and you know what the pill was. Mm -hmm. What was it? Uh, it was probably the TPA, the yes, IV TPA. What is that and why it, explain that right. and in terms of symptoms. That searing pain, unable to see in, out of one eye, that's only one symptom. Go to some of the others. That's correct. Um, the other symptoms are difficulty finding words or speaking. The most classic one is not being able to move a part of your body. Uh, a facial droop, that is when so one side of your face sags. All of these can be signs of a, an impending stroke. They can also sometimes be other things. But the problem is that because stroke and its outcome is so severe and so debilitating, it's better to err on the part of caution. Assume it's a stroke? And, yes. Absolutely. So it's just like you're overreacting, you say? No. Get it checked out. Work on it. Make sure that it is not a stroke because it's better to overreact and be healthy than to wait an hour, two hours, three hours, lose millions, billions of brain cells. And age then, matter? Uh, age does matter. Unfortunately, the older you get, the harder it is to recover from a stroke. Also, the more likely it is that you will have a stroke. Really? Yes. Because? Um, just because of the blood vessels and the way the blood vessels age, uh, because some people have high blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, um, dietary habits. Well, well, go back. I'm sorry again mm -hmm. for interrupting. Let's talk about the fact some of it's genetic. Correct. Beyond the stuff you can't control, the genetic issues, mm -hmm. what are the things that we do that create risk factors for ourselves that elevate the potential? of a stroke. Right. You said smoking. Right. So these are the modifiable risk factors. So smoking is one of them. Controlling your diabetes, although you can have diabetes when you're born, and that's the insulin dependent kind, if you control your sugars, that helps tremendously. Diet can cause diabetes. That's the secondary type of diabetes. 
that again, you can control because the sugars can damage the blood vessels. So controlling your sugars are important. Blood pressure, very important in controlling your blood pressure because that damages your um, blood vessels as well. And then general weight, just making sure that your weight is appropriate and that you're exercising and staying healthy. People have uh, been involved with a lot of stressful jobs and mm -hmm. positions, and I think that creates some problems in the body as well. Before I let you out of here, mm -hmm. tremendous advancement. You can't prevent it. But is the likelihood of a stroke less because of the developments, or is the treatment better because of the development? It's actually perfectly well said. It's the treatment and the development of these treatments that are now allowing us uh, to improve patients' outcomes. Recovery better? Recovery from a stroke that only lasts a few minutes will always be better than a stroke that is there forever, absolutely. You're treating it differently? Yes, that's how we're using these intra-arterial or these uh, devices through the arteries to literally pull the clot out explain or to it. You suck go, the clot explain out. Explain it real quick. It goes through the... So it goes through the groin into the artery okay, in the guys, groin. Guys, pull back if you could. Keep, 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 pull back a little bit. Get this. Go ahead. And so you put it through the artery in the groin, which can then travel the catheter up into the base of the neck. Right. We bring a small catheter, as small, as thin, as cooked angel hair pasta, into the area where the clot is, and we deploy either a device that can capture the clot and pull it out, or we can actually use suction techniques to literally suck the clot right out. And you didn't do that how long ago? 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we were trying to dissolve it with a chemical uh, agent and then trying to macerate it with various tools and devices. Now we have the devices wow. that are literally designed and built specifically for that function. We need to do everything we can to avoid the possibility of a stroke, but if in fact it happens, there are treatments, but you cannot recover those brain cells, but you've got to move quickly and assume the possibility, doctor, if I'm hearing you correctly, that it could be a stroke, get immediately to the hospital. Absolutely, 80 to 90% of people that have strokes come to the hospital too late and therefore we can't help them. The fifth leading cause of death in the United States affects 7, 795,000 people and killing almost 130,000 people a year. That's what we're talking about, strokes. Doctor, thank you for uh, updating us. It will not be another 10 years, I promise you. It's an important subject. Thank you, doctor. Pleasure having you. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, Wells Fargo, New Jersey Resources, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Berkeley College, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by MagnaCare. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.